Stock Play of the Day Overtime is an educational program. Any statements made by Ally Invest employees are not intended to be or should be considered investment advice, a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security, or a recommendation to adopt an investment strategy. Hello and welcome to the Stock Play of the Day Overtime Edition. On Monday's Stock Play of the Day, we talked about the iShares Emerging Markets ETF. Today, we'll discuss, did we score or did we fumble? Hello, everyone. My name is Brian Overby. I am the Senior Options Analyst at LI Invest. On Monday Stock Play of the Day, we talked about the EEM. That's an Emerging Markets ETF. Now, we discussed in general what's been going on in the marketplace. And one thing that we do see that we usually review every Monday is just the VIX index. Why? Because it's an interesting talking point. Uh, normal, in normal times, the VIX is uh, kind of, well, not as interesting to talk about. Let's put it that way. So I'm going to start by highlighting what's going on in the markets today. One big thing that we've seen is as the VIX goes up, we haven't really seen uh reaction to the VIX index by going down. But when the market goes down, we get a lot of reaction to the upside on the VIX. And I'm going to highlight that today. So we've been setting new high in the indexes. The Russell 2000 index is one of them that actually set another 52-week high. And it's good to see the small caps leading the way to the upside in general, because usually um, the, the, the companies that would be struggling would be the small caps with, without any stimulus, if we do have, have to uh, go into a recession because of unemployment issues that were caused by the pandemics, basically, uh, we're hoping to come out of that on the other end here with all the vaccine news and everything else that we have. But in general, it's going to take a while for the economy to actually get back and running. Uh, still a lot of people not going to restaurants. Uh, still a lot of people are staying at home. So until we really get back to the full, uh, full blown on the economy and everything that's going on, we've seen the VIX stay elevated. So today. I'm going to highlight, I'm, I'm showing my VIX watch list here. Um, the VIX is based off of the SPX index. The SPX is down 23 points today, which it's, it's a decent move to the downside, but it's not a huge move. And we do see the VIX index coming back up around that 25% level. Just stubbornly will not break below the 20 level. And if we go on out and look into the new year, uh, the December expiration is near. So we're going to see that December futures contract start trading very close, as we see right now, to the actual VIX spot index. They're going to be very similar, um, mainly because they have to converge. That's how futures and spot prices work. But I'm more interested in looking out in time and seeing the February contract trading at a 26% implied volatility. Uh, the March contract above 26 at 26, 26, actually, <laughs> at this moment in time. So going into... Uh, the new year when, while we're setting all-time highs, the marketplace is still showing more nervousness as we get in, uh, you know, beyond January, into February, and also into March. So over here on the right-hand side, we're actually highlighting the VIX chart. Um, the line that I, in the sand that I think I, that I've been mentioning a lot on the Monday uh, stock play of the day is this 20 line. And I'm kind of highlighting here We'll see that before the big March downturn, where we had the spike up in the VIX up around that 85 level, uh, before that, the 20% level very rarely got breached. Going all the way back to 2019, that was the last time we actually had a big move above it. But we have only touched that line once since that pandemic. And to have a little bit of a down day today and have the VIX actually go up, uh, the, the SPX being down 25 points and VIX up 180 on a percentage basis, that's a, a, a huge move relative to the, the size of the move in the SPX. Um, it's just interesting to note. It's interesting to note. It's just one data point. It's one talking point. But a lot of people still have a lot of nervousness in this marketplace. They're willing to pay up for option contracts to add some protection to that, their portfolio. And because of that, this VIX just stubbornly will not go below 20. Okay. So let's get into this week's stock play of the day. And once again, it always is a paper trade, but uh, not much has happened. So it's going to be a short and sweet little conversation about the EEM. Um, I am highlighting here 
a five day chart. And here we can move it over just a little bit so we can kind of see here. Uh, uh, <clears throat> this is a 15 minute chart. So the moves, by the way, aren't as big as they look on the chart. We're just talking about right now on Monday's uh, stock play of the day, this red line is representing approximately where that stock price was at. So it was up around, it was around that 50 level. Um, this is the 15 minute chart. So this was noon on Monday. That's always when we tape the stock play of the day. So it's always a, a, a live show. We're looking at live quotes. That's all day Monday, all day Tuesday. Wednesday, we got a little bit of a pop down, but it's not a big pop down. You're down to 50, 30, $50.30 versus 50, uh, 80, I guess, approximately. Then we had a little bit of a move up and then a little bit of a move down. And now we're we're just below where we were taught where we were talking about on Monday. So uh, the concept here that we were looking at was buying longer term options, and this has kind of been our FOMO trade that we've been talking about. And the reason why I've been looking at options on some of the ETFs, first of all, a lot of these ETFs that we've been talking about on the stock play of the day are liquid underlyings, and that's very important when you're buying longer term options. And that. Uh, as you go further out in time and you go a little deeper in the money, which is what the strategy, which is uh, the, the staple of the strategy, it, um, you usually will get a little bit wider market. So you need liquid marketplaces if you want to try to implement this strategy or you're losing too much on where the buy price is of the stock versus the sell price. You're giving up too much in the width of the bid ask spread. Okay. So. Inside the options program that the Chicago Board Option Exchange came up with. Um, but overall, this is the section. So let's look at what we were doing on Monday. Okay, so uh, the I, uh, here, here's the symbol. Uh, right now we're down 29 cents, about a half a percent. So we really haven't moved much. Uh, the thing that we focused on was the delta. We wanted a, a decent delta on our option contract. That delta was right around 83 cents. Uh, if we Go over here, this is the call option. This shows that we have 98 days remaining now. So we went out far further in time. We didn't go out to the leaps because really what we're looking at doing is trying to figure out, well, what's gonna happen overall with the vaccines? Uh, are they gonna be a flop? Are they gonna be a success? Uh, what's gonna happen with the warp speed program of uh, that, the, that the government or that the White House has came up with to try to get all the vaccines out to the people all across the US? Uh, will it be in time? Will we see a reduction in the unemployment numbers? Will the economy start coming back? So there's a lot of nervousness, and that's why the VIX is where it is. So that's essential to this strategy overall. But FOMO, fear of missing out. A lot of people have cash on the sidelines that they haven't allocated, even though the markets are continuing to set new highs. If you have a market or a sector that you would like to look at, and we've already talked about this in sectors that have not performed well since the March downturn. In other words, they haven't got back to their levels prior to the March uh, downturn. One of them was JETS, J-E-T-S. The other one was uh, uh, the financials, X-L-E was a symbol. And now we're trying to look at, well, what if you were interested in the emerging markets about what's happening uh, to the economies abroad? And one underlying is the iShares EEM. It's a fairly liquid underlying. And we see that in the bid-ask spreads. Now, I'm going to click on buy over here in the left-hand side of the chains. And that will actually put that in our workbench. And right now, we're, we're basically flat on the trade from what we paid for it uh, on Monday. Really not much has happened. So you would really be just staying the course. Um, but if you would like to get out of the trade, I always like to highlight here on the overtime, how would I do this inside the platform? Uh, basically, if you had your positions page, you can go on in and put this inside that, the position page. But if not, from your positions or holdings page, all you got to do is come to the chain and do the opposite of what you did to put the trade on. So, for example, here uh, we have a buy to open. That's how we got into the position. If we were going to close this position, we'd click on this and click sell to close, make sure we have the same expiration, make sure we have the same strike. And then we pick our limit here. Uh, we try to get somewhere at the midpoint. We probably work this a little bit. Maybe we would say 540. But always when you're dealing with uh, options that have wider bid ask spreads, very rarely do you want to put place a market order. Uh, you almost always want to use a limit order. 
Now this limit would actually be a net credit to the account because we are selling to close the position as opposed to a net debit to the account when we first put on that trade. Uh, $540 means that you would receive if you got filled at $540. One of the things about a limit order, you're, you're never guaranteeing that execution. Uh, you just, you're saying that I only want to get filled if I can receive this price. And obviously you always got to take in commissions. So if we bring in $540 less commission, quick preview order, and you send that down to the trading floor. So uh, not much to say on EEM. We talked a little bit, bit about if you wanted to, you could sell some calls against that position, like a covered call position. And inside the options playbook, we actually call that strategy the fig leaves. So uh, if you'd like to read up on that strategy, it's one way that you can bring in some income to try to help uh, combat the time premium that you bought in the option contract. We have a longer term option, but it still has time premium in it. And that means that you want to try to combat that because as expiration approaches, that time premium is going to go away. And so if we look at a fig leaf here, this is actually an alternative to the covered call strategy. And that would be one thing you could do if you'd like to. But uh, overall, you just want to make sure if you're selling calls against the position that you got to watch it because you really don't want to get assigned on your short call option. So, i.e., the name the fig leaf, and we term that inside the options playbook. It's the first time the strategy's ever been called that because you're kind of covered. You don't own the stock. You own something that looks like the stock, and you really don't want to get it called away. If I own stock, it's not a big deal if they call away because they just take my stock. But if I own a leap as an alternative, I'm going to have to do something. Um, so overall, you want to read this section if you're thinking about it, but it, it's a way to generate some income on this position while you're waiting for that underlying stock to go up. That's it for this edition of the Stock Play of the Day Overtime. On Monday's Stock Play of the Day, we will be here at noon Eastern time on the LI YouTube channel. You want to click subscribe and ring the bell to make sure you get all the notifications. Thanks for coming.